Welcome to another edition of the Fitness for All podcast, and it's brought to you by Liebert Fitness. And on today's show, we have uh, Paralympic athlete, Renee Fassell. Welcome to the show, Renee. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. So, Renee, can you maybe uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your um, Paralympic uh, and world uh, achievements uh, to start off with? Okay. Uh, well, I uh, have been a Paralympic athlete for most, if not all, of my life. I'm very privileged to have that as part of my experience in growing up. Uh, my primary discipline is track and field, so I'm a Paralympic athlete in the event of discus throw. I would recommend it to anybody that's looking at getting into a summer sport. <laughs> um, I kind of got into Paralympics at the age of, or sorry, into track and field at the age of six or 10 years old. And um, it's been a very important role in my life. Uh I have always wanted to excel in it. And at 2016, I was able to make the Paralympic Games and uh, had my first debut at uh, trying to compete to go on the podium. I came out fourth. I was extremely happy with the results and I had an overall good uh, experience with it. And now uh, I'm leading into what was supposed to be the 2020 Paralympic Games, now 2021 Paralympic Games. That's great. And when you started off, um, did you dream of being a Paralympic athlete or what was the motivation uh, behind starting uh, with the sport? Yeah, when I was young, um, my disability was difficult to keep up with my sisters. I have two sisters. I'm in the middle. Um, We have a very close age gap. So my younger sister and I would always... uh, do the same sports. Uh, My mom and father would get me involved in soccer, basketball, some of the more major uh, events. And um, as I was growing up, I did find that there was a bit of difficulty in keeping up with her. So that's when I got uh, involved in uh, cruiser sports for the physically disabled. And uh, I, I got involved in Paralympic sports. So when I jumped into track and field and I did sledge hockey and wheelchair basketball as well, it was an opportunity for me to adapt my abilities and to something that I, I became very passionate for. So track and field started off uh, as a opportunity for me to uh, be fit um, and be involved in sports and slowly became something that I, I, I did want to compete at the Paralympics and something that um, I continue to want to compete and that I represent my country for. And can you tell me a little bit more about the uh, fitness components and what fitness means to you um, as well? Uh, when did you start to get really serious about your training and your fitness uh, to reach the level of being a Paralympic athlete? Mm-hmm. Um, the the fitness goals for me um, have always been revolving around sport. So uh, fitness to me, it started out just as an opportunity to have fun, be inclusive in a team sport. And I would say that I became more serious about my fitness goals when it was uh, probably leading into the 2016 Paralympic Games where I had a realization that if I want to sustain, to move towards the school, that I have to sustain my fitness levels. And, and that includes just a healthy lifestyle overall for you know, <laughs> trying to be a better person uh, for myself in my future. So um, in 2016, I would say is when I, I got more serious about my goals. I I started to focus more on the nutritional aspect as well as the um, just movement in my lifestyle more than I had previously. And um, that was kind of a eye opening moment and um, realizing that uh, this is for myself and my fitness goals, but this is for myself moving forward and uh, all around important, healthier lifestyle. No, absolutely. And it is very important to have a healthier lifestyle. Um, what was the motivation behind your um, healthier lifestyle? Was it just the Paralympics or um, was there also another reason behind that motivation? 
Um, I think that uh, my fitness goals for the panel books was a large aspect of it, but there was also the um, the realization at that point because I was um, I wasn't in a very good lifestyle altogether as far as my health uh, leading into 2016. Um, so it was reflecting back, and I looked at where I was and. Um, looked around me and you see uh, people you love um, go through so many different health scares thing that I wanted to make sure that I put myself at risk of happening as well as put my family at ease for uh, the lifestyle that we had went there. No, absolutely. And um, that's a huge motivator. Uh, absolutely. When somebody that you know uh, that is close to you, uh, you know, has some health challenges, uh, you want to be able to, you know, try to be the best uh, version of yourself that you can be. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, Paralympics and more so the World Championships, uh, because I think it was the most recent World Championships. Uh, you did a phenomenal um, job in throws. Um, did you want to kind of explain to the listeners about the experience you had at the Worlds, um, where it seemed like every throw that you did was either a personal best or a world record? No, oh, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, yeah, the World Championships uh, November of last year was a, a definitely an eye-opening experience. My support system and I had uh, did a broad look at what I had been doing previously um, for sport, um, for my uh, lifting, uh, for my nutrition. And we kind of did a 180 and just changed everything up. So leading up to the World Championships, I had changed a strength coach um, we'd focus more on the uh, lifting aspect of my sports, as well as obviously the, the throws itself. And um, we, we also shifted that focus on what is best for sport. And as a female in sport, I think there's also that sort of pressure to fit into the idea of what a female should look like versus what is good for your goals. So we, we shifted my mindset and, and what are the best goals for my nutrition as far as what I would like to do at the world championships and, and leading at the world championships. I had this positive atmosphere. I had, uh, and I still have a very confident outlook on where I am and how I should feel about myself. So, and the games and having all of that leading into it, it, it just really made me capable. And I think really played a large aspect of being able to go out <laughs> and uh, be a personal best after not being able to do it for three years prior to that. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the training was different um, from previous years up into that year? Like, I know you touched on a little bit about it, but can you, uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, the specifics of the training that uh, had changed was uh, prior to that, um, my, my team, we had been heavily throws focusing so uh discus throws higher volume um we had a completely different technique so for discus for me um in my paralympic classification i, I was um focusing prior to that on trying to do a a spin throw so spin movement in my throws when uh what is best for me and for my disability in throwing was being at a stand throw position so that i could get all the power I had in my legs and really just chuck that disc out there. So we made that specific technical change in my throw and understanding that that was just what was best for my, my body and throwing the best I could, but then the lifting also increased. So I went from doing a uh, general kind of programming beforehand to a sport specific, um, very much power-based programming that, was uh, very intellectually uh, uh, made so that it was uh, recovery based as well. So it was a high volume for a couple of weeks. And then there was a week of recovery where you did um, lower volume um, and just had that healing. And then you would go back up. And depending on the time of year, we would do uh, different movements. So in the winter months, you could definitely test your body for a summer sport, whereas in the summer months, you'd like to ease off and allow 
for your body to be in the best um, uh, opportunity to throw well for me. Oh, absolutely. And I know off the top, I had uh, talked about uh, you being a, a Paralympic athlete or in para sports. Um, you know, and I totally forgot because I've known you for a lot of years and I just don't really care about it myself. However, the listeners just might uh, want to know, um, what is the challenge that you have in life? And can you explain a bit about the category system that goes with the track and field athletes and what, um, uh, um, I can't think of the word right now, but um, of what classification that you're in? Yes, of course. So for me, um, uh, my physical uh, disability is called cerebral palsy. Uh, cerebral palsy is a neurological impairment. So uh, at, at birth, I was two months premature. I had three strokes on the left side of my brain. And um, from the age, uh, well, from when I was born, um, the right side of my body has been a mildly weaker than the left side. And there's different variations of cerebral palsy. So I'm a hemiplegia, which means the one side of the body is affected and the other side is not, where there's um, different uh, levels of impairment for that. In Paralympic sports, um, it could be uh, neurological impairments. It could be a uh, amputation. Uh, it could be a um, <laughs> it's escaping me at the moment. It could be a spinal cord injury. So there's there's lots of opportunity and adaptive for you to excel. And in in track and field, um, they have a classification system. So the classification system uh, divides uh, everybody on uh, their uh, ability to allow for you to compete with someone across the world that has the exact same, if not impairment as you. So in my classification, I am what's called, there's T for track and F for field. So I'm a field athlete in discus. I'm an F38 athlete. So there's 31, 32 to 38, 31 being lower neurological impairment, 38 being the highest functioning neurological impairment. And I have people in my classification that are here in North America, South America, in Europe. Um, it's it's quite <laughs> it's something it's hard to describe how uh, unbelievable it is to have the opportunity to compete with people that have uh, adaptations as me and to excel in something that above and beyond what your application would be. Yeah. Now, as far as training goes, um, there are some. Uh, you know, uh, para-athletes that do need uh, accommodations in order to be able to uh, do an exercise. Um, do you need any such accommodations? And if so, can you maybe talk a little bit about them and, uh, you know, how they accommodate that? Of course. Uh, I think no matter who you are, you always need adaptations. And for me, I most I most definitely need uh, to adapt when it comes to um, my uh, working out and lifting, uh, even running. It's just being aware of uh, your body and what you need. So when I had first got involved into fitness and now into lifting, um, it was important to understand uh, that everybody does it differently. For me, um, when I'm doing movements, you could look at, for example, a bench press with the bar. Um, my right side's weaker than my left side. So if I am doing it with the bar, I got to watch to not compensate with the left side and ignore the right side. Uh, if I were to do a isolated movement like a dumbbell bench press, I am lifting probably 10, if not 15 pounds heavier on my left side than my right side. And that is okay because that is what my body allows for me. And I'm working towards something on making the quality for that. So it's, um, I, for me, it was just important to like kind of uh, tear down the mentality that everybody's the same. It's important to know that uh, you are working for this for yourself. And uh, I have adapted my uh, workouts and recovery based on what I need. And recovery is very different as well with my uh, disability. And during your Paralympic career, or just your field career, 
Uh, what are one or two things that you have learned that kind of stick out the most to you? Um, could you be a bit more specific in what in general, or? Um, yeah, like, uh, do you have certain philosophies, or um, you had talked about how your mindset is changing uh, in regards mm -hmm. to um, you're not like everybody else, and that's okay and how you know you're different and you're going to adapt exercises so um to me that would be one thing where um you've changed your mindset and that's probably been uh you know a big thing for you to overcome so is there anything like that yes i think that there has been enormous amount of change uh, my philosophy uh, now versus my philosophy even a couple of years ago you're right has significantly changed now I kind of have this outlook and I remind myself that um, that it's important to know that what you're doing you're always bending you're always being tangible to what you're doing and you're never breaking you're just you're always prepared to make a change and it's uh, it's a big aspect of your mindset is that positive outlook so you know if something maybe didn't work out the way it's supposed to go that's okay because it's setting you up to be resilient for something else in the future. So I think that um, my look on resiliency and, and making sure that, you know, if you stray off path, it's okay to, it's okay. You're going to make your way back in. Just it's important to know that you can rely on yourself, but rely on the support systems around you. And I think growing up, I've learned um, in general, but uh, of course to my, my fitness goals that you have to be willing to lean on others and support others and have others support you oh for sure and um what is support to you um like is it um listening to somebody or talking with somebody or like what's your idea of support i think the idea of support is being open to listening to somebody else uh, um in whatever the conversation might be support is hearing somebody out and uh even if you don't agree just knowing that that's okay because um, I'm going to be uh, willing to listen to you. And if you need help, I'll be there for you. And support could even be as far as just reminding somebody else of um, the, the other side of things, the different perspective on what they're looking. Support comes in so many different ways and it depends on what you need. So for me, I think my, my best regard of support is just... Um, knowing that uh, if I do need to lean on somebody, a family, a friend, that th they will be there in whatever regard that they're capable of. Yeah, no, and that's an absolute great answer. Um, can you tell the listeners, um, because I know that the Paralympics uh, have been postponed and they're going to be in 2021, can you maybe um, you know, tell the listeners about your uh, exercise uh, routine from now up until the Paralympics and how you're going to prepare? Of course. Um, the postponement of the 2020 Games was um, very difficult because um, it's it's a big change for an athlete, but it's, it's a big change that happened in general with the world. So uh, the past couple months, it's been a bit difficult because everybody's training environment has changed. Um, and my training environment, uh, of course, has done that as well. I, I'm very lucky to have some of the equipment that I do have available, but I've most definitely learned my limits when it comes to physical health and um, body workouts <laughs> or or other other at home workouts. The internet has been a wonderful thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be going back into uh, a partial training environment where I'm capable of being with my coach as of Monday. So Monday is a very exciting day for me. <laughs> um, so my coach and I leading into 2021 is we're, we're trying to keep the pace that we have going right now. I do have a bit of recovery in August where I'll be um, doing lower uh power volume lifting and we're, we're going to focus from now until about January on my nutrition trying to increase protein intake and muscle mass um, we're trying to focus on the uh, lifting to create that muscle mass and power so that I can really just whip the disc out there and then from February until pretty much the trials which should be in July 
Um, that's when it starts with competition season training. We're hoping to do some training. Usually we go out to Florida, but depending on the travel restrictions and of course what's best for uh, the world at that point, uh, we would even look at going and traveling within our beautiful country, Canada, and finding the best training environment to really push forward and get as many throws in as I can to the games so that I can hopefully, you know, race to the podium. And I have every confidence in the world that you are going to be able to go on the podium this time uh, once 2021 uh, happens. And uh, yeah. selfishly, um, I hope that you don't train in Florida um, because as of today, um, there's 10,000 coronavirus coronavirus cases out there so selfishly i don't want you to go out there because i don't uh, even want to uh, even uh, in the slightest chance that you may get it i don't want you to get it renee so yeah and we are uh, we're planning for staying within canada and making the best that we can that's for sure because if it's anything at risk at all it is not worth it no absolutely um now and I might have asked this uh, before, um, but do you have any other like philosophies in life or sayings that you go by in life? Um, as an example, one of mine yeah. is that everyone has challenges. Some are just more noticeable than others. Do you have any <laughs> that are uh, that you have? I love that. I actually really enjoy that. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think something that I, I repeat personally to myself is um, head up chin down so your head's held high you're proud you are pushing forward and positive but keep your chin down focused on the important aspects of what you're doing and um, focusing in on what those goals are in hand that's amazing. Uh, can you let the listeners know um, where they can follow your journey or maybe on social media in case they want to be able to cheer you on over the next uh, few months until you get to the Paralympics? Of course, I would love that. Thank you. Um, my uh, main source of social media is through Instagram. That's where I, I share a lot of my uh, journey uh, leading up to the Paralympic Games and my Instagram is Ray Foe so R-A-A-Y-F-O-E Ray is a nickname I have and Foe is short for Foe Sal <laughs> <laughs> and I do uh, uh, participate in tw- Twitter leading up to the games I will be doing a lot of Twitter updates so that's R Foe Sal it's F-O-E-S-S-E-L I could spell that phonetically if you need me to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. We'll make sure that uh, we get your details up on the website when we uh, get this on the uh, Fitness for All website. So we'll get the spelling there and they can uh, also grab it from there. And, uh, you know, personally, Renee, I've known you ever since you came, I think, to that very first uh, field practice. Um, and I also remember, the, uh, Ken, I think one of the first things I remember get, uh, Ken Hall who I believe is still your throw coach yes the best coach in the world there you go I remember him getting you to roll the discus and he kept making you roll the discus <laughs> and that was uh, we won't say how many years ago but that was quite a few years ago <laughs> so and you know it was a, an amazing um, feeling and I can only imagine what it was for you when you were at the Paralympics, because we were all at a, an establishment that uh, we'll say serves chocolate milk and <laughs> cheering you on and to see how many people came out and supported you and watched you. Um, it's just a testament to the uh, person that you are that has such great character and will um, you know, you're just so good with everybody at the end of the day and you treat them as an equal. And that's what's so great about you. Well, Cam, I could uh, let you know that I remember you even before the field when I was doing sledge hockey. And I am absolutely so warm and fulfilled um, hearing about having all the supports I have and, and none of this journey would be possible without, <laughs> without everybody, without the club, without uh, my family, friends, my co yourself, um, knowing that you guys were uh, cheering me on was, is, is what really pushed me. And a part of me wishes that I could have been in that establishment watching 
with you guys. Well, maybe what uh, we'll do this year when you uh, get the uh, gold is that we'll make sure that uh, we videotape the whole damn thing and then you can watch it when you come home. So there you go. Well, thank you. And thank you for allowing me to do this uh, opportunity with you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so everyone, that was Renee Fassel. Uh She is a uh, Paralympian uh, who is going to be going to the uh, 2021 Paralympic Games. And make sure that you do follow her on Twitter and Instagram. And Renee, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. And thanks so much for being on it. Thank you so much.